Hello and welcome back to Joellen's Kitchen. Today we're going to make a Pennsylvania Dutch dish called snapper soup. But it's going to be mock snapper soup, in other words imitation snapper soup, because I could not get my hands on a snapper turtle. The old fisherman um, just didn't bite when I said, hey, you get the turtle and clean up for me. I'll make the soup and you get to have dinner. <laughs> that didn't work. And there was a time when the snapper uh, turtles came up on the mud banks to lay their eggs in flower gardens, whatever was around. So I thought, oh, perfect time. Well, I found out that it's illegal to harvest snapper turtles when they're laying their eggs. I didn't know that, but the Fenwick here in town used to make snapper soup, and we'd go there just for the snapper soup. So today we're going to make it using chicken. You have to start with some veal knuckles, and I couldn't find veal knuckles in the butcher shops, so I just got beef bones because uh, veal is a baby cow with the knuckles where the joints bend, and uh, baking everything together. I don't have any chicken fat, but you can use butter or margarine. You need a cup. So I have two sticks of margarine ready to go. I'm going to put that in with my bones. Next, we have to cut up some onions. And I pre-cut mine. I diced them. And I got a nice big white onion, as you can see. Lots of onions. We'll put those in. They wanted three small onions or one big one, so I just got one big one. We have lots of big onions around here. And they wanted two carrots diced, so um, that yields about a cup of carrots. If you, you have the smaller ones in your refrigerator, as long as you end up with about a cup. And you end up with about uh, two stalks of celery, gives you about a half a cup of celery. So we'll put those in. And then you want to have two lemon slices. We're going to throw that in. We want one bay leaf, just one. I guess it adds something to the flavor. This is thyme, just one quarter teaspoon of thyme. It's like little tiny seeds. Put that in. And then we want a half a teaspoon of marjoram. Not margarine, but marjoram, A-M. One half teaspoon. Now, ironically, it wants three cloves, just three. So we'll drop those in. And then salt and pepper. Now, it doesn't tell you how much salt or pepper, but I usually put about a half a teaspoon in to start. And I got this great big jar of pink sea salt. I thought, well, let's try that for something different. So there's some salt. And likewise, we want some pepper, and we'll put about half a teaspoon of the pepper in. And if you don't like pepper, you don't put it in. It's that simple. Now all of this gets mixed together the best you can, and we're going to pop it in the oven on 400 degrees and just let it bake. And again, I'm using my old stove, so I just have to guess at the temperature. I got it pretty close, I think. Oops. Okay, we got the light on. Turn on the gas. There we go. Get a nice glue flame. I don't have to do a lot of preheating because it heats up pretty fast. going to stick this conglomerate of, we stuck the conglomerate of vegetables and beef bones with the butter into the oven to bake. We'll let that go about half an hour. It should come out a little bit brown. And then when it comes out, we're going to add a cup of flour so that we can make more or less a gravy mix with it. And we'll get that going on. In my crock pot, I had been starting the bones to cook them there. 
you want about two quarts of beef broth. So I'm going, uh, the other one, I added a boiling cube to the first part, but this happens to be three pounds. It comes out to 48 ounces and a quart is 32. So I'm figuring with what I have in here and this, I'll have two quarts of beef broth. So I'm going to put this into my crock pot so it heats up because you have to let that cook um, once it's all together about three hours and then when it's all mixed then you go another half hour. I'm going to add some of the broth to my flour and make a thick paste because this is going to go into the rest of the liquid to make it like um, almost like gravy but it's a lot thinner than gravy because it's a soup broth but it does get a little bit of thickening to it and I don't want it to be all lumpy, so that's why I'm mixing the flour with some of the broth first. And then when you put all of the vegetables in it and the beef um, bones or the veal bones, whatever you have, it should taste pretty darn good after it's done cooking a while. And when I say a while, it could be um, 30 minutes or a couple of hours some of the other interesting ingredients we're going to be adding is Tabasco sauce, sherry wine. It's actually found in the cooking department, not in a wine store necessarily. And we're also going to be adding two cups of tomatoes that go in there. So it's quite a conglomeration of all different kinds of ingredients. But all I know is snapper soup was high on our agenda when we were teenagers and we'd go out on dates and things. Boy, getting snapper soup was a real treat at the Fenwick Hotel, which is, it's now a pharmacy. It's right across from the Boscov's Lebanon Valley Mall. So it's good times and the Quitabahilla Creek was right behind there. So if they had kids catching snapper turtles, there was a, um, a steady supply of snappers at that time. But I don't know that kids do that anymore, nor do I know if anyone knows how to clean them anymore. Maybe some of the old timers could teach some of the kids to pass that on, but I'm doing the cooking part. I'm not catching the turtle. I, tr I tagged the plan, but it didn't work out. <laughs> so, chicken it is. Mock turtle soup or mock snapper turtle soup to be more precise. Okay, we have our gravy nice and thoroughly mixed there. So we'll wait for that to add that. I'm going to add about half of this wine to the vegetables so there's a juice in there that they can cook. Okay, I think it's time to add the chicken to the vegetables to get that cooked. We also want to add one hard boiled egg and I don't know if you can see it or not but I am going to chop that up a little bit. And I like this silicone mat because I can fold it a bit and carry things in it. Okay, let's go add our chicken and our hard boiled egg. Oh boy, if you like the aroma of spices cooking, this is going to tickle your nostrils. It smells wonderful. Okay, let's add this. But, oh, by the way, if I didn't tell you already, I also got diced the chicken into very small pieces. Can you see that? I got it. I used a chicken breast. the oven for at least another half hour to get that chicken pretty well cooked and then we're going to add the rest of the uh, ingredients and I'm going to put it into my crock pot and let it go several hours more just so all that flavor gets through the meat 
and all the vegetables and when you eat it it will be so good okay we came over here to the crock pot and we're going to add the rest of the ingredients right to the beef broth and that stock that I was cooking with the bone previously and we're going to get it ready to add our vegetables and chicken which would be snapper if we could have a snapper turtle We're going to add a dash of Tabasco sauce. We're going to add two cups of tomatoes. And we're going to add our cup of flour that, that we mixed with the beef broth. And we're just going to add it slowly stirring it in this will make the soup just a little bit of body but not real thick okay let's get our vegetables and chicken out and we're going to be putting that into our broth with the sherry and Tabasco sauce oh boy this is going to be good <laughs> That can't get any fuller. It is up to the brim. Okay, I turned that on low and we'll just let it go for maybe three hours. It should be good and ready to eat then. Save some of the sherry for the end. In other words, put a little bit on the table so those eating it can put in some fresh um, sherry and mix it in if they like that sort of thing because the uh, flavor of the sherry is what I think I remember the most from the Fenwick soup and snapper soup and um, quite frankly I think that flavor all disappears it like evaporates or something from the soup if you put it all in ahead of time so I was pretty pleased with my first try at snapper soup based on a recipe from an old Pennsylvania Dutch, Deutsch, German um, cookbook. And if I would make it again, I would probably make a few adjustments based on what I remember from the Fenwick recipe. For instance, I don't think the Fenwick recipe had any flour in it because the flour gives it a slightly gravy-like look even though it's not real thick and also um, I'd probably add one or two more hard-boiled eggs because I like eggs and in two quarts of soup it one egg kind of gets lost and I personally like eggs you know you may like it exactly like the recipe called for but if you remember the Fenwick I'm giving you some ideas that might make it taste more like the Fenwick. Not that it didn't taste, it's all about the looks and the taste. So between the flour, because the Fenwick seemed to be just more of a, a clear broth, nothing uh, with a little bit of a flour base. And those are my recommendations. I mean, go wild, experiment with these recipes because they're obviously from one person and there were many ways to make things. There still are many ways to make things. Make it your own recipe and the way you and your family like it. Thank you.